Hey guys, what's going on? My name is John. In this video, I'm doing another product review. Today we're looking at the heavy duty ProFlex heated insole with Bluetooth by Thermacell. These insoles are battery powered and controlled via Bluetooth from your Android or Apple device. They're supposed to keep your feet warm for up to eight and a half hours and recharge in less than two. Let me break this video down for you real quick. The first thing we're gonna do is unbox it, take a closer look at it. Then I'm gonna show you how to download the free app, how to use it. I'm gonna test out the battery life. We're gonna test out max temperature. And then I'm gonna tell you how my own field testing went. And then after that, we're gonna wrap it up with pros, cons, where to get it, how much it costs, and that's it. So here we go. Here we go, the Thermacell heated insoles. These are wireless, rechargeable. These are the ProFlex heavy duty with Bluetooth. If you're looking at them on the shelves, you're looking at sizes, you can find it up here. You can also find it at the bottom, sizing chart in the back. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Let's open it up. So you've got the two insoles, got the battery charger with the two batteries in it, charging cord, part that plugs into the wall, you got the instructions. Got one disclaimer telling you that these work different than the chemical heaters that you're used to. Uh, this is like a customer service card and then a bag to throw everything together. When you're done using them, really nice that they actually provide a bag. You just slip these in here like this. Throw the charger in with it. You're all set to go. The insoles themselves, pretty straightforward. Um, they're soft. There's a little bit of a tab in the back. You can see that right there. So when it's down in your boot, you can pull it out. Uh, flip it over. There is a little bit of a line. We'll talk about this in a little bit, but you can trim it to a certain point to fit your boots a little bit better. And then if you look really close, there's a number that identifies each one of your insoles. You're going to want to write that down and remember that. That helps you when it comes time to uh, sync with your Bluetooth, but we'll talk about that. Okay, let's look at the charger real quick. Battery obviously goes in either side. Micro USB plugs in over here. USB plugs in so you can plug it into the wall. Otherwise, you want to put it in your car or possibly a computer I guess since it's a USB you can do it that way. Now let's talk about the batteries real quick. When you pull them out of the charger it has to be slid out. If you pull it up all the way out you could crack off this little red piece and that's what charges it up so make sure you're sliding in and out and that goes um, with, the, uh, with the insoles as well. So what I'm going to do is slide one in and when you're powered up what you're going to see is Right in here, it's gonna blink red and green for 10 to 15 seconds, and that's just letting you know you have power to the insole now. The battery itself is really soft, so you're not really gonna feel it too much when you're walking around, hopefully. As far as sizing goes, if you flip it over, you can find it at the bottom here on the heel. This is a large from size seven and a half to nine. To give you an idea what that looks like, um, this is an insole from a running shoe that's a 10, which is just slightly bigger. So I think the sizing actually is pretty decent on these. If they're a little bit too big, like I showed you before, you can flip them over and you can trim it. It gives you the line. You don't want to go past that line because that must be where um, some of the coils and stuff are in there and you don't want to damage those, but you can trim them a little bit to fit your shoe or your boot or whatever you're putting them in. I'm going to put up a sizing chart on the screen right now. If you guys want to take a look at it, pause it for a second. Pretty straightforward, guys. Now that you took a closer look at the product, let me show you how to get that free app as well as how to use the thing. Let's go to the App Store. Search Thermocell. The Thermocell heated product app comes up. Download that. Once that's done, you're going to see it on your desktop there. But before we do that, let's go to settings, Bluetooth. The two numbers that are on the top there, those are the ones that correspond with the numbers that are inside the battery compartment on the insoles. It shows that they're not, they're not connected. Um, let's not connect them now. The app will actually connect them, so let's back out of there. Go to the app. And then you can register. I'm going to skip this right now. And then we're going to add nearby products. I already named them previously, so they're John's insoles. You'll get the opportunity to name yours too. Right now it's picking up the left and the right. I'm going to hit add. Now when you first set up your device, it's going to ask you for a four digit code to unlock the heated device. I already set mine up, so I'm going to put the number in. I hit submit. Okay, then here we are. It's showing that my insoles are inactive. I click on John's insoles. And now it takes you to your, you know, the main screen that you're going to use. What it's showing on the left and the right is how much battery is left in the left insole and the right insole. Right now it's on no heat, so they're not on. I can switch it to low. Now your insoles are on medium or high. The other thing that's kind of cool is you can link them. You can see link on top there. If I don't link them, you control them independently. Maybe your right foot's cold, your left foot's cold.
but if you link them, they're always both on the same temperature setting. Now if you back out of this app, it'll stay running in the background. Just because you back out of the app doesn't mean they're going to shut off. They do stay on, and then you can go and you know browse the internet and text your buddies or, or do whatever you want to do. So it does stay on in the background. And that's pretty much it. All right, now moving on to some testing. The first thing we're gonna look at is these lithium ion batteries. The claim is that they charge less than two hours and you're supposed to be able to charge them as many as 500 times. When you put the batteries in the charger, you're gonna see orange lights come on. That means the battery's not fully charged. Each battery has a separate light. For this test, I completely drained both batteries before putting them in. After one hour and 51 minutes, the first battery became completely charged. Three minutes later, at one hour and 54 minutes, the second battery became completely charged. Both green lights came on in less than two hours, so I guess that checked out okay. Now we're gonna move on, guys. These batteries are supposed to last eight and a half hours on low heat when the insoles are powered up. We're gonna test that out right now. With the battery's completely charged. I turned the left insole on low and the right insole on high. Put together a time lapse hour by hour until the batteries were completely dead. For this test, the insoles were not in a boot. They were sitting out in a pretty ideal condition, about 67 degrees. The battery on low made it seven and a half hours with temperatures ranging from 80 to 99 degrees. Seven and a half is just shy of the eight and a half hour battery life as advertised. The battery on high only made it four and a half hours with temperatures ranging from 105 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're wondering how those temperatures compared to the advertised temperatures, on low setting the insoles are supposed to reach 100 degrees and I saw temps up to 99 degrees, which is right on. As far as the high setting, temps are supposed to reach 115 degrees. I measured temperatures as high as 113 degrees, which is also pretty close. The next thing that I wanted to do was a temperature test looking at the hot and cold spots on these insoles using the infrared surface thermometer. And since a lot of you guys are familiar with the chemical hand warmers, I'm gonna throw one of those into the mix as well. After 20 minutes, the chemical heater was only in the 90s, even though the max advertised temperature for this particular product was 156 degrees. Now I know from experience that these things will get way hotter, but 20 minutes obviously wasn't enough to crank it up. On the flip side, the insoles did reach max temperature in only 20 minutes. You can see from the video, the hottest part of the insole was just past the ball of your foot, up by the toes, right in the middle. Temperatures during this test reached 112 degrees Fahrenheit. The rest of the insole didn't really heat up much at all, especially around the heel by the battery, it stayed about room temperature. This test showed me two things. The first thing is that the insoles warm up closer to the toes where people's feet typically get colder. The second is that even though I know these chemical heaters get way hotter than these insoles do, it seems that the insoles get to a maximum temperature a lot faster. Okay guys, now I wanna talk about real world field testing that I did with these products. The first time that I used them, a huge snowstorm came ripping through, followed by temperatures that were well below zero degrees outside, and I knew I had to get in the tree stand for some late season bow hunting. I had a long walk to my stand, so I figured, these heated insoles, perfect. Light boots, light socks, I can walk to my stand, no problem, not lugging you know, big boots with me, and uh, I'll flip them on when I get to the stand, no worries. I should have done a better job of reading the directions and trying to figure these things out first because it was a disaster. Within an hour, my feet were absolutely freezing to the point where I was uh, on the border of probably unsafe. Got out of my stand, had to head back to the cabin. So the first outing with these things, not so good. But before returning them, or even throwing them in the garbage, I decided to actually open up the instructions, read it, go online, see what some other people had to say about it, and try to figure these things out a little bit more. Okay guys, two problems here. The first one was uninsulated boots. I thought I could just get to my stand, flip my phone on, these things would heat up, and I'd be fine. Not the case. You gotta have some kind of insulated boot to keep the heat in, and that was definitely my bad. But the second thing was, I really ran out of room, and it was a, it was a tight fit. I took the original insoles out of my boots, put the thermocell insoles in, and when I put my boots on, there wasn't really much room for air to circulate around my foot or anything like that, so it was a pretty snug fit. You need to have a little bit of extra air around your foot so you know that air can warm up and warm your foot up. The light sock was actually okay. I just needed to have a little bit more air, a little bit more space around my foot to heat up to keep my foot comfortable, and then again, have an insulated boot to not let the heat out. So strike one, but that was my fault. So after doing my due diligence and trying to figure out actually how these things worked, I used them for a second time. Besides late season bow hunting, you can always count on cold weather in another place and that's a playoff game at Lambeau Field. Kickoff temperatures were about 10 degrees and I spent 
four hours tailgating as well as three, three and a half hours in the game. So I was outside for probably seven to eight hours. This time around, I put the insoles in a little colder weather boot, 1200 grams of Thinsulate. And for whatever reason, my later season boots were a little bit bigger, one size bigger. So I had plenty of space and air around my sock and around my foot. I will tell you that over the course of that game and standing on cold concrete the whole game, I did not have any issues whatsoever with my feet getting cold. So I had these things on medium all day with no issues whatsoever. The interesting thing about it is with chemical heaters, you guys can feel how hot they're actually getting. Hopefully, you know, too hot where if they're on your skin, they may even burn you. You don't even realize that these are on, but if you start thinking about it, then you're like, well, my feet aren't cold, they're just comfortable. So the best way to describe it is just kind of a, a warm glow, I guess. So the Packer game was a way bigger success than my late season bow hunting outing. I had the right pair of boots on, the right pair of socks on, the right amount of space around my foot to let that air circulate, and uh, my feet didn't get cold whatsoever. So that's it for the field tests. I guess we can move on to pros and cons. Pros, it comes with a bag. Might not seem like a big deal, but I've got so much hunting crap that at least I can put all of this stuff in one bag and not lose a bunch of cords or, or get it messed up with all my other junk. Number two, I found the app to be user friendly, not only to download and to figure out how to use, but also to use in the field. Just make sure you guys keep your cell phones charged up. Number three, the battery's comfortable. This is one thing that I thought I was gonna have a big problem with, especially at the football game standing seven to eight hours. I mean, your heel is right on top of that battery, but it's padded enough that you don't even know you have it in there. Four, the batteries charge up quick, less than two hours. The great thing about that is, Morning hunt, you come in for lunch or you go back to your truck or whatever, two hours, you get them both charged back up, put them back in your boots and you can go up for an evening sit. And I'm gonna list the battery life as a pro, even though it didn't make it to the eight and a half hours as advertised, you know, seven and a half hours is a pretty good run. And if you're gonna hunt all day and you don't have an opportunity to go back to the cab in the house, your truck to charge these batteries up, you can buy a second pair, get them charged up, that'll take you through the rest of your hunting day. I'm gonna leave a link below the video in the description so you guys can check out the extra batteries as well. Number six, they actually work. I mean, provided you do everything right, you don't make a, a bonehead mistake like I did while I was bow hunting, but um, they do keep your feet warm. And number seven, they don't get so hot that your feet get sweaty and or you have to worry about you know chemical burns if they're right against your skin. Now we're gonna move on to cons. The only drawback that I found with this product is really just you know, having the appropriate sized boots. So like I talked about, my early season boots, you know, they fit really well. I want them to fit as good, as close to a running shoe as I can. If I gotta walk long distances, I gotta climb trees, I don't wanna, you know, have a lot of extra space and be lugging these big boots around. But in that situation, you have no room. These insoles are a little bit bigger than the original insoles of your boots, so you don't have the space to have the appropriate amount of air circulating around your foot to keep your foot warm. When I made the switch to the bigger boots, Luckily, I had boots that were big enough and allowed for a little bit more air circulation around my foot that these things worked really well. So I guess my advice to you would be either take your boot to the store, put the insole in and make sure you have enough room for your foot to breathe, or at a minimum, if you're getting these things shipped to you, at least try them on before you go out in the field to make sure that you know it's gonna warm up the way it's supposed to. All in all, as long as you guys don't do what I did, I think you'll be fine. Now we're gonna move on to cost and where to get it. As of February 2017, the making of this video, I found it on Amazon for right around $200. I'm gonna leave an affiliate link to Amazon in the description below this video. You guys can click on that, go see what the current price is. There's always tons of reviews on Amazon. You can go see what other people are saying about it. And I'm also gonna leave a link to those extra batteries. One more thing before I end this video, limitations. These insoles are supposed to be water resistant and I decided not to test that. I buy my boots to be water resistant. So if I got water coming in my boots, I got bigger problems than my insoles becoming wet. That's it guys, I hope you liked the video. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment below, that would be awesome. I try to give you guys as much unbiased information as I can so as the consumer, you can make a decision on if you like the product or not. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, antlerscore.com. Check out all my other hunting videos. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Peace.